Hello, and welcome to this tutorial on post-processing FEA results on SimScale. Post-processing is a key part of interpreting the results of a simulation, and can be used to dive deeper into the output to enhance understanding. The post-processing environment can be accessed by navigating to the simulation runs on the left-hand side tree and expanding the tab. Then we again expand this tab with the simulation name, in this case SnapFit, and click on Solution Fields. Today we are looking at a snap fit assembly, where we've modelled half the geometry, making use of symmetry. The prong body on the left moves into the holder body on the right to lock the mechanism shut. We've completed an FEA simulation on this assembly as it locks to understand the stress and strain distribution through both parts. Immediately on the left hand side, we can see the filter tree. It is currently populated by one filter, which is the parts color filter. Here we can select the assembly or parts color. We can also select the opacity. We can also color the entire part by a simulation output, which we'll get to later. On the right hand side, we can see our mesh or geometry panel. Here we can select which parts to view at any time by clicking the eye icon to hide the desired part from view. We can also hide parts by first clicking on the desired part, then right clicking and going to hide selection. We can then re-enable all parts for viewing by right clicking anywhere in the viewer and selecting show all. On the top bar, we have a number of options. The leftmost button allows us to choose our view we have the choice between an orthogonal view and a perspective view. Just right of that is the option to change render mode. With this option, we can select whether we're looking at the part mesh, surfaces, wireframe, or a number of other render, render types. Then to the right of this, we can see playback options, along with a slider. If we have a simulation that changes with time, these options will allow us to change the time step we are looking at. However, currently, if we slide the timeline bar along, nothing will happen. To see the movement of the pieces, we have to introduce our first filter, which is the displacement filter. With this filter, we can specify a displacement scaling, which is by default 1. We can slide our timeline along and view the position of our parts at different stages in the simulation. Using displacement scaling, can help in visualizing small deformations, but be careful, as adding it can lead to unphysical results, with parts sometimes moving through each other. Our next filter is the cutting plane filter. This will introduce a plane along which we can visualize our results. We can reverse its orientation by clicking this button but can also directly change its orientation by clicking a specific normal or manually adding a normal vector by components. We can also change its position by simply sliding the slider here, which will slide it along its normal axis, or exactly position it by coordinates by opening up the drop-down menu here. We can also choose whether the cutting plane will hide part of the body with the clip function, whether it displays the mesh with show mesh, and whether we want to see the plane itself with show plane. We can change the colouring of the cutting plane to show us the results which we want to investigate, or colour it by a solid colour. There are three output data types for FEA simulations. Scalars, vectors, and tensors. All will be output in component form, along with a magnitude for vectors and tensors. More data fields can be output to the post-processor within the result control, prior to the simulation run, where we can add things like contact fields, different stress criteria, and reaction forces. We can color the cutting plane by von Mises stress, a scalar value, by simply clicking its name, this will allow us to see the von Mises stress through the internals of the part on the cutting plane. The legend shown at the bottom of the screen 
will give us our insight into what the different colours mean. The units of the legend can be changed by going here. In this case, we can select megapascals. We can change the bounds of our legend by directly sliding the end pieces, or by directly editing the bounds. By right-clicking the legend, we can choose different settings for visualization. We have the choice of a continuous scale instead of a stepped scale. With the stepped scale, we can choose the amount of divisions we want. We can choose between different legend colors here. I personally like the Thermal 2 legend color. Then finally, we also have the option to use a logarithmic scale or to scale our legend to the dataset. Another method to choose what data type we are visualizing is by clicking on the result quantity name on the legend bar. We can also choose to color the plane by a vector component, such as displacement upwards, or Z in this case. Finally, we can choose an individual component of an output tensor, such as the Cauchy stress tensor or strain tensor. If we look at the first normal component of the stress tensor, denoted by XX, and scale it properly, we can see we have a negative stress compressive at the top of the prong, and a positive tensile stress at the bottom. This indicates bending. Our next filter will help us to analyze this in more detail. We can add the ISO surface filter, which will create a zero thickness surface that represents a constant value of the chosen data type. In this case, we can choose Cauchy XX and set the value to zero to see everywhere in the geometry where this stress component is zero. Previous filters can be disabled by clicking this button here. On the bending prong, this will tell us our neutral axis of bending. This can also be done with the signed von Mises output which can be added in the result control section prior to the run. We're not seeing much here, so I'll re-enable the part color, but make it slightly transparent so we can see the ISO surface. I'll then color the ISO surface by vertical displacement, changing the legend to millimeters. from minus 0.5 millimeters to zero millimeters. I'll then add our next filter, the animation filter. Here we can select how many time steps we want to skip, but in this case, we don't want to skip any. I can then press play. We can see how initially, as the prong enters the body, the neutral axis is sloped indicating the bending might not be in the direction that we want, but after this it evens out. To get a better view of this, I can disable displacement and use a cutting plane to clip the model. I can also set the animation to only show when the prong is touching the static body. Here we can clearly see the sloping of the neutral axis of bending as the prong enters the body. The final way to visualize results for an FEA simulation is by using an ISO volume. An ISO volume will create a virtual volume of everywhere in the geometry between two bounds of our data. For example, if I create an ISO volume by von Mises stress, I want to visualize everywhere that is going above a stress of 10 megapascals, I can do that. And to see this animated, 
we only need to click the play button in animation again. That ends our tutorial for today. Thank you for watching this tutorial on post-processing for FEA on SimScale. Happy simulating.